What's up, everybody? We're on US 19 heading north in Hudson, Florida. This area here, I've uh, covered at, at night a lot of times, so somehow I always end up driving through here at night. Uh, I'm on my way up north or south or whatever. But this area here is notorious for, uh, well, the bad stuff. The addiction, you know? It's a predominantly white area, very kind of urban, but at the same time kind of rural. It's kind of a weird mix of everything here. This area I've covered it many times in the past. Uh, I went into a pawn shop. Uh, I'm surprised it's open this late, but apparently it was. And I was shocked at the items that they have for sale inside the pawn shop. Somebody pawned their Jordans. You know the situation's gotta be bad when you pawn your Jordans. I mean, when you see people, they, they actually have shoes in them. I mean, there's people here who just about sell the clothes on them to get whatever fix they need. I mean, there's literally uh, a crisis level situation in this area. I bet you they're selling Cuban sandwiches. What are they selling? I bet you that food oh, truck's yeah. selling Cuban, the, the food truck. Oh. I'll bet you they're selling Cuban sandwiches. But this area here, uh, people say, they call it Trash Co County. It's Pasco County, but people call it Trash Co County. <clears throat> and believe it or not, there was a time when parts of this county were actually really attractive. People would, lived in Tampa would say, oh, Pasco County, you know, as if, a, if it was a glamorous thing, you know. But those days are kind of slowly fading away. We're now entering Hudson, and uh, you know Pasco County. You've seen them on Cops. The Cops TV show does a lot here, and it's kind of exposed uh, the world to to what happens in this county here. Um, it's just a poor area. Very little opportunity out here as far as good-paying jobs. Mostly everything's kind of fast food and retail and. Uh, Sometimes uh, there's just a lot of uh, people here that are low life. It's actually depressing at times to drive through here and the stuff you see, you know, the last time we saw young women, you know, out in a vulnerable position and you say, wow, man, you know, and almost like you feel like, man, you wish you could help them. But the reality of it is they're, they're hardened criminals. You know, they're, they're not out here by chance at this point. I mean, if you take their own life decisions and that's you know you want to help people but it's hard to help people who don't want to help themselves you know <clears throat> it's very hard to help people who don't seem to want to help themselves and well I mean in this pawn shop I saw a few very interesting items I mean I saw a police baton which I have one Usually that's something that a retired cop gets rid of at some point. You know, it's an authentic, you know, vintage police baton. I have one in case I got to beat somebody. It's good, but not, not, not finally, not finalized. Them. Just kind of give them a good whooping, a good, a good spanking. If you just, that's something you have just to give somebody a good spanking. You know what I mean? And I think they're, are they like those police batons? They don't leave any bruises, do they? Like they're designed, is that right? Am I right or not? Like police batons, they're designed so you can hit somebody with it and not leave much of a bruise, if I'm not mistaken. So anyways, a police baton, which just makes me think, I know how I got my police baton. I got my police baton from a retired cop, so that kind of makes me wonder if, you know, a, a retired cop, you know, from, you know, somehow ended up just having a pawn it, you know? Uh, the other thing that I saw in there were Jordans. I also have Jordans. They, I didn't even know I could pawn my Jordans if I got into a pickle, man. I didn't know you could do that. South Pizza. You know, the pizza around this area is good because there's a lot of New Yorkers here. And I mean, like, real New Yorkers. You know, like, real New Yorkers. Like, you got New Yorkers that are kind of, you know, yuppity. But then here, you got some, like, hardcore New Yorkers around here. They got good pizza. We ate at this one pizza place. Where was it? What's it? What's it? What city was it in? Was it Newport Richie or Hudson? Hudson. Remember how good it was and cheap too. 
I gotta sneeze again. Get that out of here, get over there. Ah! 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 Dang it, I had to sneeze. Ah! Are you done? It's helping, it's helping you scream. Dang it, man, I'm so irritated by something. You smell that? Oh, that smells bad. It was like burning tires. A lot of people just walking around here at night, and there's a lot of homelessness in this area. You see a lot of homelessness in this area. A lot of just a lot of beggars too. I remember, uh, remember last time I got up here, I got angry because there's so many beggars asking for money. I got, I, I just, I literally got annoyed at it. You know, one young kid was like, "Come on, give me money for a beer, man." And I was like, "All right, man. I gave him some change, right?" And there was another truck right next to me. This was in Tarpon Springs, a little south of here. And uh, I gave the guy some change, and he goes to the car right next to me, and he asked that guy for change, and the guy got mad. He said, look, man, you asked the guy for change, he gave you change, and now you're coming and you're asking me for change. So you lied to that guy. This guy got angry. He was like, you lied to that guy, because I you know, I gave him some change. I come give me some money for a beer, man. At least I'm being honest, you know, I just want to buy a beer. I just need two dollars for a beer, so I gave him like two dollars. Turns around and asks the other guy for money. That guy was not having it. That guy was like, "You asked him for a dollar. You told him you were being honest about it, and now you're asking me for money. So you obviously lied to him." And the guy, the guy went off on this little begging dude. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, the guy was right. He's just going around being a bum. You know. And I didn't really uh, care at all about helping this dude get his beer money. I really didn't because I work all day and sometimes I can't buy a beer for me. After working all day, so I'm buying it for somebody who's just a gas station junkie. You know what I mean? I'm going to buy it for a gas station junkie when sometimes I, I want a beer sometimes for me. And I'm like, yo, you know. But the point is that... Is that a midget? <laughs> Is that? It looks like it's wearing a wedding dress. It's a midget wearing a wedding dress. What, what on earth is that? <laughs> I'm what trying to figure is, out what, what is What on earth is that? Hold on, hold on. What on earth? It's like a midget. What on earth? It's a midget. It, it's a, it's a drunk what? midget wearing a wedding dress. <laughs> Oh no! I, I can't. I can't believe I said that. Hold on. What the? What is that? Oh hell! What the no? What on earth? Look at this one. He's got like Christmas lights. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What on earth is that, yo? Dude, it's like a drunk major wearing a, a wedding dress. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, yo! What on earth is that? Hold on, bro. Hey. Hey, come here real quick, yo. You got scared? Mm -hmm. Yo, it's a drunk midget wearing a wedding dress. I don't even know what we're looking at. He's drunk because he. Oh, no, 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 no. What? Uh, I'm sorry I'm cursing, but this is extravagant. What am I even looking at? Oh my gosh, what am I even. I guess the chain's broken and they're trying, they're trying to drag. What is this person wearing? It's a wedding dress. It's a wedding dress, it is. Hold on, man. Hold on, man. What am I even looking at here? It's a wedding dress. Yo. What on earth is, what is, what even is that? Bro, I'm sorry I use profanity. If you've watched my channel, you know I try not to do that. But what on earth is that? What did I just witness? Y'all know I don't say profanity. You watch my channel, you know I don't. I, I couldn't help it. I'm sorry, y'all. What on what? earth is that? What on earth did I just witness? Oh my God. No, no, it's, there's no, it's, not, it's, it's not religious. It's just 
Maybe she's trying to cover her body. Somebody, it could be somebody with a mental illness. Yeah. You know. And then on top of the mental illness, you add addiction. Yeah. And you get some bizarre, bizarre, wild, that wacky, was the most, most bizarre, bizarre thing, thing I've, I've ever, ever seen. No, yeah, in no my doubt life. about it. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Now, keep in mind. You got people with mental illness. Yeah. Then you got drug addiction on top of it. Mm -hmm. You know? But I'm telling you guys, this area here is so wacky. It's so bizarre. I'm sorry about the profanity. And again, if you watch my channel, nobody's perfect. Everybody at some point has their faults. I try the best I can to keep my channel PG-13. It's a battle because and we all have. Screaming at us. Yeah, she yeah. was like, "Keep it moving." Did you see the truck that had the Christmas lights going the other way? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, I, I I really try not to use profanity. I'm working on it constantly, but I could not help being explicit. Maybe I can have you go back and edit that. Can you do that for me? You can trim out little pieces, right? I want to have you edit that. Can you do that for me? I don't think it's possible to edit that. No, like when I said the thing I was supposed to. Anyways, I try not to do that. But like I said, it's a wacky area. There's a lot of mental illness. There's a lot of, there's no opportunity. There's just a combination of things that make this area just wacky. And you know, a lot of times people say, say, why do you show these things? I'm like, yo, how do you not show them? If you're a YouTuber, you got to be raw, unedited, uncut. You have to show people what's really happening out here. You know what I mean? Like, I, my question is, how could you not show some of these things that I show? You know what I mean? I'm not a realtor. I'm not trying to sell you a house. I don't care if it looks bad or not. But there is a lesson in it. And a lot of people say, what lesson could there be in that? There's a lot of lessons in that right there. One, that I do not care about traffic laws in the state of Florida. <laughs> in Florida, you can do whatever you want, by the way. Because when the cops pull you over and they see you're from uh, a tourist from another state, all they care about is the tourist money. All they care about is the tourist money. I'm a tourist. I can do whatever I want. If I was a local and I did that, if I had four tags doing that, and the cops saw me doing it, I would definitely get a ticket. If they see you're from somewhere else, then they're just like, dude, look the other way. This is a tourist. They're trying to keep their crime rates up, keep the tourism in the state of Florida. In Alabama, if you break the law, this guy's from California. And in Alabama, if you break the law, believe me, you break the law, you'll see the punishment and the law take place. Here in Florida, whatever. Anyways, I don't care. And there is a lesson. And the less, there's, there's a few lessons. You know? One lesson is that mental addiction is not good. You cannot have somebody with a mental disorder. And then on top of that, you throw addiction to it. If you have a mental disorder, and I know a lot of people, especially not in Alabama, but a lot of people with mental disorders who on top of that combine it with addiction of some sort. Maybe to a legal or an illegal substance, it doesn't matter. It's a horrible, horrible combination. And a lot of times, even, that, even though that person has mental illness, the willpower to do something about that situation is still in your hands. Even if you have a mental disorder. I don't even know how somebody with a mental disorder even... I do believe that there has to be a, like a law... Where if somebody has a mental disorder, they're not allowed to consume alcohol. I think that should be a law. I'm serious. You know, they have all these right. They have dry counties and all that. What they really need to have is a law that says, look, if you're older, but you're suffering a mental illness, you you shouldn't be allowed to buy alcohol. Because you have a combination here in the United States now of a lot of people on alcohol with mental illness. Bad combination. And it's also a warning example for the rest of us that do have a head on our shoulders right now. And that is 
that's the consequences of reckless uh, partying lifestyles and addiction. You don't end up into addiction. You don't go from nothing to addiction. You go from recreational use to addiction, whatever it is you're using. Some people get addicted, some people don't. Some people claim that they have the ability not to get addicted, which what I see is somebody in denial about their situation. And, you know, I mean, a lot of people say, oh, I do this, right? But it's all cool, man. It doesn't affect me. I'm like, no, dude, it does affect you. Because just about all the people, a lot of them I love, a lot of people I know, friends, associates, uh, blah, 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 they, they don't, they're in denial about their consumption. The vast majority end up divorced, in prison, in jail, homeless, and then they say, oh, it helps me cope with my stress. The reason you have stress is because your life is a mess. I don't need to escape reality. I don't need to, oh, I'm, it, 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 it keeps me calm. I don't need to be kept calm. Oh, I mean, unless I'm in a road rage incident, in that case, I kind of do lose it a little bit. But you, generally, I don't need to be kept calm, you know? Oh, I take this stuff to keep me calm. We're now in Hernando County. This is the Spring Hill area. You know, I take this stuff to keep calm. Like, what do you mean? I don't need anything to keep calm. You should just be calm normally. You know? And if something's wrong, maybe you should change the situation instead of adding something to the situation. Yeah, so I don't believe in... It can, and I'm just saying, if you're my subscriber and you don't agree with me, maybe you're one of those people in denial that says... Oh, man, it just keeps me calm, man. It helps me relieve my stress. Yo, you shouldn't be able... If you can't handle stress, what makes you think you're able to handle stress combined with addiction? That, that's retarded. I don't need help. I mean, I, I've been through stressful situations, and it causes health problems. I don't see how addiction is going to make my stress any better. If anything, it makes your life more complicated. And I see a lot of people who are in denial. And... The vast majority of my people that I'm talking to you about end up going on the same path, which is uh, destruction of their family, maybe divorce, child support, whatever family situation they got going, that goes to crap. Whatever employment situation they got, that goes to crap. Whatever housing situation they got, that goes to crap. Their whole life goes to crap. And then they're sitting there telling you, oh, no, it, it helps. It doesn't help you. If it helped you, you wouldn't be in the mess you're in. And I'm telling you, I've seen so many people go down the path of destruction with their lives. And, and just about all of them tell me the same thing. It helps me. It helps me. It helps me. It's not helping you. Okay? Because I don't know too many sober people whose lives are in complete... I mean, you might see 5 or 6% of people who are completely sober... And they're in these situations. 